everybody. Welcome to another episode of iNews. First, I just gotta say, oh my god, check out the set. Teal, you rock like just the most awesome. Seriously, you you really, 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 really rock. Um, so thank you big time because this just looks amazing. I love the fog. I love the pumpkins. So for those of you who want to know, this was done by Teal. Uh, will these other happen? Speaking of Wolfie, I don't have my co-host today because he's a little sickly and coughing and running a fever and making really bad jokes. And so, yeah, instead I have a triple that is silent with our uh, filmer, Bensky sitting on top of the Tribble. So Bensky is not going to ask any questions and, and the Tribble is fairly silent. So it just looks a really, really adorable. I did threaten Wolf that he might have possibly lost his co-host position. Anyways, on to other good stuff. I see in the back of our lovely, lovely, lovely audience back here, there's this thing called the iNews Chopper, which I, I think Judy dropped Bensky off in and then parked it on the stage. So my only question is, are we now going to have the iNews at 9? Just curious. So can we have like emergencies and can we have like, could we turn it into a rescue chopper? I'm just just curious, you know. It's cool. I like it. It's got all of our cool colors and everything. Um, so I thought I thought this was very cool. We, we needed to say something about it because Judy does ex excellent work with the uh, aerodynamics and, and the beautiful things that you can do with stuff. So. That was very, very, very cool. Now, you'll notice that we're all dressed up for Halloween, as I mentioned earlier, because who, who put a raven next to me? There wasn't a raven here before. Now there's a raven. Okay. Anyways, um, we have our Fright Fest. <laughs> our Fright Fest is, is going is going to be starting up here very, very shortly. So uh, just as a reminder, everybody, keep an eye about. I, I know um, EC Events Coordinator um, is putting out all the notices and everything, and everything should be up on the calendar. So make some time for that and hope that uh, everybody uh, actually gets there. Oh, that's really cool, Judy. We, we might have to do something with that. <laughs> Anyways, I'll have, to, I'll have to think about what to do with that there, Chopper. Ha, 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 ha. Today, I have a very, very lovely and special guest, and, and she's sitting here next to me, and you might notice that she's uh, really well armored, and she has uh, three guards um, that follow her at all times, according to the information above her head, and she's got this really, really wicked sword on her back that I think is just freaking the bomb. Anyways, she ends, she leads up the um, the Game of Thrones role play and all of their Sims. I'm pretty sure is is it all of the Sims? I think it is. She'll correct me if I'm wrong. Anyways, I just wanted to give a great big welcome to Beth Tyrell. Say hi, Beth. <clears throat> hi everyone. Thank you so much for coming. There she is. So, okay, Miss, I'm in armor. Yes. Completely in armor. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to stun you. I'm going to stun everybody with this, um, which is which is why I was telling Wolfie had to be quiet when we were talking prior to the show. I am probably one of the very few people who has never seen an episode of Game of Thrones. Never. Never. Oh never my ever. Nope. I know, I know, Lexi, yes, you guys can, you can, <gasps> yay, I'm not alone, Rain hasn't seen it either, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is actually kind of good, because we probably really would get sidetracked on the whole story of Game of Thrones and all the deaths and everything, because, yes, I have seen <laughs> the memes of all the deaths, so my only question that I have to lead off with, it may, first of all, is, do you guys promote lots of deaths in your RP? <laughs> well, no, we don't pr promote lots of deaths. But we do have lots of fun. Um, That's good. We took over Game of Thrones um, about a year ago when the previous people left. Now, anybody who knows the previous Sims, um, they had a lot of Sims. Now, we've gone a little bit smaller scale um, than, than was there previously. But it's a wonderful medieval role play area um, and in many ways smaller is better because it means that there's always someone round to role play with it's no good having a hundred sims if you've only got one person on each one because you can't actively role play so there's always someone about to role play um, we've recently united with um, another game of 
Thrones role play group that was within in Worlds. Um, they were Game of Thrones UK. So we joined forces um, to provide a good solid role play, play in free form and improve the role play between us. Um, so we've got a lot of members and we have active role play every day. Um, the, the Sims at the moment are undergoing some major transformations, some really, really exciting things happening. So if you haven't been over, come over and see us. Um, we will be having a ball very soon, an OOC ball that people can come to. Um, we're thinking about making it a masked ball. Um, because we've just had a new High Garden castle built for us by Rathmir Stagger. Um, now, he's going to be opening his own medieval store, selling his build soon. Mm -hmm. But watch out for that, because if you have a chance, come over and see the castle that he's built. You will be blown away. Um, now, ah. Wolf has asked what OOC. I think okay. I'm just going to let Beth do all the talking because she's on a roll oh. here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Wolf does have the question. There was a question previous. So let's backtrack right. a little bit here, okay? Because um, okay. Rain asked, how many members do you have in the actual RP group? Well, in between the two role play groups, we've probably got about 100 members. Now, they don't all role play at the same time. Right. So, so, so don't panic about that. We, we have actively each week, you, you perhaps will see 20 or 30 different ones coming in and out, depending on the story, depending on the time of year, because as a lot of role play groups will know in the summer people go out in the sun mm -hmm. and then when the winter comes well you tuck up yes lexi winter's yep. coming <laughs> exactly time to go back to the computer <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly so mm -hmm. so numbers do increase so it does fluctuate but a good question there Okay, so now the other one, which Wolf got to, and then I have a question because, you know, we got to get all of these things covered. So okay. Wolf obviously wanted to know OOC, which anybody who's a gamer or a role player, you know, has heard the term OOC, IC, um, et cetera. But we'll let you explain it because you know what the difference okay. is on those. All right. So OOC means out of character. Now, when you role play, if you think of it as being an actor on a stage, you go in um, and if you're an actor, you don't go in as yourself. You go in as your character. So mm -hmm. that's I see. That's in character. Sometimes you will need to talk OOC out of character. So I would go and be my normal self if I was out of character. But if I was being Beth Terrell, I would be IC, which is in character. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we have... Not the same old. <laughs> <laughs> you were saying? <laughs> yeah. On, on the sim, generally, we will always be IC um, mm -hmm. in character because that's what we're there for. It's not like a normal sim where perhaps you'll go and you'll dance. People come there because they want to role play, not general chit chat or what have you. So right. it, it is, it's a very different kind of sim. Um, but our role play is free form, so it's not scripted. Anybody can come along, um, they can have a part, they can join in, um, and they're not going to be told what to say. We don't micromanage it. Um, it is, it's, a, it's an evolving story and it can take twists and turns depending on what way role players react to it. Right. So. Okay, I know Lexi asked you to do this, which was to wear your HUD, which is what you have above your head. If anybody wants to zoom in and look above uh, Beth's head, she it says Lady Beth Tyrell, Knight of the Realm. Uh, hang on, because your name is in the way here. Warden of the South, wife to Sarah Jaren Tyrell, 
followed by three guards at all times, knight, and I'm going to assume L7 means level 7. Yes. Your health, is, and we were covering this earlier, health is 155 points, her stamina is 145, her food is 99, she obviously got hungry while she was stand, sitting here, because it was 100 originally, <laughs> and air is 100, which for those of you who want to know what air is for, it's for swimming. So, apparently Beth likes to swim, just so everybody knows, or apparently she doesn't want to drown. Either which way. Um, <clears throat> so my question is, if you have the the role play HUD, and, and, and as you were saying that you guys do the twist and turns, etc. cetera. Um, so it, being a long time RPR myself, we've always had somebody who was what we deemed as the storyteller. So I would imagine that you have somebody who sort of does it or, or a few somebodies who does that. Well, a few people will actually come in with a thread of a story and they they come in with their little thread and they start it off and then someone else may add to that and someone else will add to it and it will depend as i say on how the role players that are there that react to it will depend on what line that story goes so so they you know it, it's not a fixed thing mm -hmm. now what we do have that's fixed is that our story is actually because obviously it's game of thrones it's set some 300 years prior to the current books which gives a lot of scope for improvisation mm. but we've used all the great houses from the books such as the baratheons the boltons the tyrells the lannisters obviously oh you won't know who they are because you have okay i've heard some of the names so don't think Yay. that i'm a total dunce i just haven't watched the actual series okay <laughs> okay so <clears throat> Our characters, um, they tend to follow the base trait of those houses. So, um, you know, the Boltons will be, um, they're, they're from the north and they tend to be rather brusque and opinionated. Um, the Lannisters, well, nobody likes the Lannisters. <laughs> well, the Tyrells <laughs> certainly don't. I mean, the Tyrells are nice people. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, well, now wait a minute. Are you a little biased there? Yeah, just a little biased. So okay, our, okay. our characters, um, they, they, we follow the base traits of the houses. But then that being said, we've added a few new characters to this that you wouldn't see in the book. So that gives another twist. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, um, being 300 years previous, it, it does sort of like, it allows you a lot of flexibility because you're not trying to follow the actual storyline itself. Other than probably preserving alliances or maybe having alliances that lead to where the conflicts currently are. Yeah, exactly. We we couldn't follow the books because otherwise people would just come in and expect it to be exactly as the books. Um, that doesn't mm -hmm. happen be, in free form. That, that can't happen. Otherwise, everyone's going to sit there with the script. So we've based it 300 years before, so it doesn't interfere. Um, and we can write our own storylines and, and, and do it as we go. But using Game of Thrones... Um, the books as a baseline structure just for the characters and little things that happen. I mean, we have dragons, um, we've had grayscale. Now, grayscale is awful. It's um, basically you turn to stone and um, it's very contagious. So Ooh. we've had all sorts of things happening. Um, we've also, um, we have got a jousting arena um we do have some fighting which hence the sword um but we that i want to steal have... off of your back yeah okay yeah sure. <laughs> <laughs> i have lots more and this isn't the largest one <laughs> you know but... somehow i'm not surprised by this it just i guess it fits with your outfit you're, you're looking fashionably dangerous Yes, well, when I thought thought I would come in armor just to give you a taste of of the sort of things that are available. Now we do have Sky Mole um, above the Sims, which is packed full of fantastic medieval items, um, lots and lots of very talented people in Inworlds have got stores there. So if you're looking for medieval, you know, come and check out our Sky Mole. Okay, quite, okay, okay, so, oh, I have, okay, first, hang on, Lexi. 
So Wolfie, even though he's not my co-host today, had, had a very important question, which I, I told him that I already had on my schedule slated to ask, but I'm, I'm going to do that anyways. Um, but we'll answer Lexi's question really quickly. Are you allowed to ride horses? Oh, yes. We ride horses quite a lot. And we also do jousting, which is on horses. <laughs> Yeah, that would be helpful. I mean, jousting on foot. Have you ever tried that? It's, it, I find that it's really, no. really just not that great. Um, and okay, well, Beth just disappeared oh. off of our couch. And uh, we still have her in voice, but you guys don't have her. So we're just going to put a little pause here. And that way, Bensky can edit out this part until she comes back in for the actual. Okay, so... Uh, like technical difficulties there so we were talking about oh the horsies and jousting and the fact that jousting on foot would be a really really bad idea so yes <laughs> my my next question to you is is actually you know more in worlds because you, obviously you're in in worlds so how when you're doing your rp how, how does how does rp in in worlds what, what's your major um, pros and your major cons about actually doing RP here in, in our grid? Well, I, I think the, the best pro is the fact that we have so many wonderful brims to work with, which means that our builds can be fairly spectacular and something that we would never be able to do on this scale in Second Life. So that that's an amazing factor. And as for cons, I don't think there are any um, because we have everything that we need here. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got wonderful creators. We have the animations that are needed. So there aren't any cons about role playing in, in worlds at all. Well, that's that's good to hear. I mean, I, you're you're totally free to say anything you wanted there, just so no, everybody knows. I would have said and I would have said <laughs> anything. I would have added anything that was needed to be said. But honestly, there there's no drawback to role playing in um, in in worlds. So here's a question for you, because you guys have an RP HUD. So is this like a generic RP HUD that you guys have, or is it one that was specifically designed for your actual group? Right. The, this is the Unity HUD that was designed and supplied by Warwick Falconer. Um, oh, okay. And, and it works. He does various ones. This particular one was for Game of Thrones. Um, and all of his Unity items work with the HUD. So that's what allows us to do jousting and fighting. Um, when we do fighting, um, our health goes down, the stamina goes down. Um, and if you sustain enough hits, then you will become unconscious. So it, it's very realistic um, and it, it's a brilliant HUD to use, very easy to use. And it brings the role play to life. Yeah, definitely. That's that's very cool because that's one of the key features that you really need when you're going to be doing the RP stuff. Yeah, I mean, that having been said, the Game of Thrones UK group that we have joined with, they don't actually use the um, Unity HUD. Um, they choose to do everything with, with spoken word. Well, not spoken, but with written word, which is fine. I mean, because um, it's more creative writing and it, it's enjoyable. Anyone can use it. Yeah, but on the flip side, so here's the thing, because you have RP and if anybody who's ever done RP, they, they know obviously the tabletop RP. We, we all started, started off in that in that genre at some point or another um, who's done RP. Then you have the LARP, which is live action RP. Um, which I think actually is is more fun. I've I've honestly always liked the live action. You guys are more like live action because you have the HUD and you're mm -hmm. doing the sword fights and the jousting and and all that good stuff. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it is it is quite live action, but it's um, now what was that? Let's Lexi. Asked. Lexi's asking, what activities on your Sims affect the health, stamina, food, and air stats? Well, we already covered air. That would be like you know. Drowning. Air, yeah, air is if you drown. So if you fall into water, you get bubbles that come above your head, your stats go down. And if you get to a certain level, it will say Beth Tyrell has drowned. Are you actually <laughs> dead at that point? I mean, is your character dead? 
Well, no, you you reset then. But technically, oh, okay. yes, technically they have died. But obviously that, that would be um, a little counterproductive if I've accidentally <laughs> fallen in the water and killed myself. That that would be, yeah, a little, little bad, a <laughs> little bad. That yes. is the jousting scripted to reduce health. Uh, yes, it is. If you if you sustain hits, then your health goes down. Um, when you're fighting with a sword, if you're running around a lot, your stamina goes down. Now, the idea is to try and get your opponent to chase you around a lot while you're fairly static and their stamina goes down, that can also cause um, a knock-on effect as to how easy they become to to, to kill them. Right. Um, it's not killed, killed, unless it's decided that that character is being killed off, which is very, very, very rare. Right. So, okay, but... so what happens if, okay, so what happens if there is like a, a duel to the end? Um, yeah, I mean, because you, you mentioned that... You, if you drowned, you reset. What, is, what does that mean? What does reset mean? It just means that your stats go back to what uh, to 100. Oh, so you have to rework them back up again. Yeah. Ah. Um, now, the F for food, there, we have items all around the sim that are scripted with Unity scripts. And when you touch them, you actually uh, consume food. So um, if you're... If your stats go down to zero, then you fall unconscious um, simply because you've got no energy. You've run out of food, so mm -hmm. you have you have to remember to to feed. You have to watch your stats when you're fighting to make sure that you're not dropping below certain levels. Obviously, try and avoid getting hit, etc. But, I mean, the, the fighting jousting is only a very, very, very small part of it. That mainly, we um, work on the verbal role play. We've got lots of... Um, sort of small stories running into big stories. It's very exciting. But, I mean, anyone can join Game of Thrones. They don't have to have seen the the, uh, the television programs. They don't mm -hmm. need to have read the books because we've got lots of things that can help people to sort of learn. And it's very easy to pick up. Um, if you are just told a little bit about the current storyline and then you, you can just join in. It, okay, so the current storyline is easy. everybody tries to kill everybody else. The <laughs> author is always killing somebody who you really, 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 really end up getting attached to and they always end up dead. So yeah. when you RP no. the Game of Thrones, don't get attached <laughs> to anybody. Jaren, no. be very, very careful. That's all I'm going to say to you. <laughs> so, Did I sum I it up? Mean, uh, <laughs> Uh, pretty much, yes. Uh, our, our current storyline involves um, White Walkers and the Walking Dead, basically beyond the wall, um, and they are trying to converge upon Westeros, and the Lords of Westeros are uniting together to try and kill the White Walkers off before they kill us. That's when they say winter is coming, they mean death is coming beyond the wall. So that's what it's that's well, what it's we're working like at at the moment. Kill or be killed. Come on. I mean, <laughs> yes, it makes sense to me. Okay, I, I also have to point out to everybody. I, I just want you to know. So I went and I changed my clothes today, and because it's Halloween, you'll notice I have no feet. That's right. Oh, I have no feet. <laughs> I am the footless Ellie. Yes, yes, that's right, the footless Ellie. And uh, I think it goes with the Halloween set quite nicely. Personally, it's kind of like the Headless Horseman, but I'm the Footless Ellie. Yeah. And here I'm looking at Beth's pretty cool, like, chainmail boots. And I'm just, like, you know, envious. Has anybody actually zoomed in on these things? These things are really, really cool. I mean, they actually look like a – they look really awesome. Oh, they don't think they actually had rubber back then, did they? I mean, I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm sorry. I'll no. be, I'll behave now. <laughs> <laughs> I think okay. Mostly was um, bark, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, 
Well, for answer, answering your question, yes, we do welcome direwolves. Wait, well, oh yes, okay, Wolfie wants to be a direwolf, because of course, let's go with the name Wolf. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Direwolves are the only non-human playing characters that we have. Um, I know some of the medieval sims have sort of dwarfs and and trolls etc but we don't because they they're not in game of thrones basically um but direwolves are however dex uh, lexi dinkies are not allowed to live in westeros <laughs> what about if you wore them on your on your shoulder no because they oh. wouldn't have had them in medieval times <laughs> Well, technically, they didn't have dire wolves either as playable characters. I'm just throwing this out there. That's all I. I'm <laughs> Obviously, El, you have to read the books because there are dire wolves in well, there. Well, then, well, okay, then if you want me to read the books, then you would have to admit that if you read the other books, there are dwarves and elves and etc. So not in Game of Thrones. Oh, 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 see, she's going to be picky about this. I think she's biased <laughs> again, peeps. That's all I'm going to say. Yep. I think she's bi biased. They have rats in Game of Thrones. Well, everybody has they rats. Do. They well, do. The rats. rats, come on. We're rats. Everything. You're going to RP a rat, Lexi? <laughs> Why do we have to disguise Lexi as a rat? I mean, Lexi, rat? Hello? Oh, okay, sorry. I'll behave now, Lexi. <laughs> 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 See, this is, this, is, this is where it gets a little crazy around here. All right, so what are some of the activities that you guys have coming up? Other than the, you said the Masquerade Ball, so what date is that going to be planned for? And then I would assume you're going to have something for like a Yuletide, something like that? I mean, right now we have Samane, but do you go by Samane? I would think you go by Samane. No. We no? Okay. No, we we don't tend to go for tr like the traditional holiday things, mm -hmm. um, but we will be having um, once we've finished our current phase of rebuilding, we will be having um, the, the mask ball, and then people can come and see the new castle, which is amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, yeah, we're. Yeah. We've got various things in the pipeline that are being planned. But as I say, it, the best thing to do is if you're interested in medieval role play, come along, grab yourself a visitor's tag, sit down somewhere and just watch what goes on. And then if you're interested, let us know and we'll work out a character for you. So I would assume for the masquerade that, that you're planning on, they could yes. probably get everything in the Sims up above or the, the shops up above for because you want them to be, I, I would assume, you kind of sort of want them to have some idea of being in character, not maybe heavily tight to the rules if you've got new people coming in. Well, but, what, we would, what we would say is just for the, the ball, we're going to have it OOC. So okay. if, if people would just wear medieval style, um, or you know, just ball gowns, anything mm -hmm. like anything like that. Okay, perfect. That's that's good to know. Wolf wants to know because I guess he's decided that even though he's not my co-host, he's going to try to be the voice of sanity. <laughs> I don't know why. I I don't understand it. Are there any particular skills or roles you are seeking for our peers? Right. D to role play, you just need to be enthusiastic basically you need to be able to follow a storyline but and and want to have fun and join in I well mean, i think what he's asking is more like are you looking for particular roles that need to be filled like a i don't know like a blacksmith or you know the the local right. chef i mean you know the, things like that are you looking for somebody who needs to like you know those roles need to have somebody there to actually like move the storyline along and or to to open up storylines possibly Just, okay you know. there's no one particular role that we're looking for but we have got lots of roles that are available it depends whether you want to be a small folk or whether you want to be a noble whether you want to be a knight um there's various roles mm -hmm. it just depends um on which sort of level you want. I mean, small folks, you've, you've got your blacksmiths, your cooks, your bakers, um, nobles, you've got lords and ladies, 
there are so many different roles that are available. So if anyone is interested, just come along in mind as whether you want to be a rogue or whether you want to be a noble. And then we can find a house that, that's got places and match you up with that. Okay, and he wants to, are you looking for storytellers or scripters or anything along those those lines? Well, because we're freeform, everybody tells the story. Mm -hmm. it, it's not like there's one person who will stand and say, this is what's happening. Nothing gets narrated, but the, the stories flow because the role players move them along in a nice steady flow. Um, so we, we don't have storytellers. Okay. Which would, that would make sense. I mean, that would totally make sense. Um, uh, maybe, okay, Lexi, I, I think he says, I think Wolfie is asking if you need folks to help build with the infrastructure, like the scripting, the building, et cetera. If there are people that are interested in that, they're more than welcome to come along, tell us what they've got in mind, tell us what they 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 would like to do and obviously we we can have a look and see if there's something that you know we might need we've got um Rath is building some of um well as i say he's he's built Rathmius has built the castle um but our next phase is to move the village actually into the sky um and the Game of Thrones UK people are building a lot of the other structures because we're we're doing now Winterfell, Casterly, um, anywhere in Westeros that you can think of, we will have a role play representation of that area. So there's not going to be any area that that people can't join. Mm -hmm. um, they just have to come along and say, well, this is the sort of thing I'd like to do. And as I say, whether that's building or whatever, then come and see us. Come and talk to us and tell us what you'd like to do. So another question that popped up while we were talking, um, if you're, well, let's say you want to be one of the little people, um, you know, the, the blacksmith or the small, yeah. okay, fine. Little people. I'm good with the little people. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> small folk. Um like you start off as a blacksmith, is there a way for you to progress your character to where you can end up being a noble or a knight? Or is, is that following the rules of your noble if you're born into nobility, etc.? Right. If you are, if you want, if you're a blacksmith, the chances of you becoming a lord are pretty slim because mm -hmm. normally you're born into the house or you might marry into the house. So, um, yes, I mean, you could meet a lady of a uh, of a of family and marry her. That that's not beyond the roles of realms of possibility. Um, it doesn't normally happen, but I'm not saying that it couldn't do. But there there are pretty much roles to suit everybody. Um, if you're, for instance, if you're a blacksmith and you want to become a knight, then you have to become a squire first. And uh -huh. the squire, the squire would take lots of tasks. Um, they have to squire to a knight, um, and then they would do lots of tasks to win their knighthood. Right. Okay. So, so if you're not born into a house, you can't really be a noble. I mean, let's let's we'll just lay that out because the chances of a noble marrying a blacksmith are pretty much zilch. Not without yeah. lots of. Um, the angry, nasty, horrible words from dad. Anyways, <laughs> um, and quite possibly, you know, some uh, being thrown out on the streets with not a penny to their to their name. Um, so that's not going to happen. So you could become a knight, though, which is probably the highest rank outside of being in an actual noble. So you can start if you want to start. You can start small and just say, you know, I'm just I'm just going to come in. I'm going to be a blacksmith, or I'm going to be I'm going to be a chef, or I'm, I'm going to be, you know, well, the baker, in in, in other yeah. words, or something like that. And and something through whatever like whatever ends up happening, end up you know finding out. Hey, I like fighting. I'm going to become a squire. I don't know how that's going to work, but I guess I'm going to RP it yeah. out. 
I mean, if somebody wanted, if someone was a blacksmith and they decided they wanted to be a lord, then we could write the story, we could adapt the story that it turns out that in actual fact, um, they they turn out to be the illegitimate son of one of the lords and, and mm -hmm. that can then be discovered. So so there's ways of doing it. Right. Um, they, they then would be adopted into that particular house if that's what they chose. Okay, so now here's a question too, and I'm sort of I'm sort of walking into a kind of a a tipsy little area for some people. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I look at your title, Knight of the Realm, now understand I've I've never watched or read Game of Thrones, yeah. but even in um, those those book settings, for the most part, women have a particular structured role in each and every single one of them. I think there's only a few instances where we don't really see that, which is with J.R.R. Tolkien's uh, The Elves, where the women don't really have that kind of thing. Um, so I don't know if Game of Thrones is structured the same way. Obviously not in the RP sense, because you're a knight of the realm. So yeah. does that sort of break with the books or are you still following kind of the same concept of what the books have set? No, actually in the books, there are a couple of female knights, which has enabled us to be able to do the same. I mean, traditionally you think of a knight as being, you know, a, a male. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's the traditional thing, but um, in the Game of Thrones books, I mean, there's Brienne of Tarth. Um, so it is, it's probably more frowned upon that there are female knights, but right. it's not, not unheard of. So, so they're um, rare, which is as it should be. Yeah. According. Okay. Because I mean, anybody who's been walking, watching, or, or paying attention to Viking knowledge as of late, you know, they've found lots of mass graves and whatnot, and they have found their first actual shield maiden, um, and she was considered an actual officer. So, um, some of those norms are, are sort of breaking down. So I just, I'm just curious if you guys are sort of following the book, and so if if you, so that leads, of course, to the question: if you're a female, and let's say you're a baker. Do you have that chance to become a knight? And does the female have to work harder at it than like the male squire would have to? Yep. We okay. um we currently have um a squire who's a female who's working um she's working through the task set. Now the tasks are the same whether you're male or female. Obviously, if you're female and you're not as strong as males, um, mm -hmm. then you may well find some of the tasks harder, but they are the same whether they're male or female. They're not gender-specific tasks, okay. um, and it's not easier if you're a female. They're just set the same, um, and the same standards need to be met. And once the tasks are all done, you will then become a knight. But okay. you will know that you've earned that right to. It's not just given. <laughs> I can right. Okay. All right. So Lexi has a question, and and probably this will be the last question because we're we're running through on our time. How do you increase your level and or stats? Well, you you can. Um, do various tasks which could increase your levels. Food is easy because you just eat. Um, <laughs> as, as you go up levels, your health and stamina will increase anyway. Okay. Um, so <laughs> when you get to, I mean, these are pretty much as, as high as they, they can go. So you're pretty much maxed out. Yes. Okay. Much. Um, so, if you have a, if you if you're level seven, if you're level yeah. seven, then how do you get to level eight? I mean, and what does the levels mean as far as how how do you earn those levels? Well, level level one to four. Four is basically as high as you can go for a standard role player. Okay. And then level seven, um, I'm level seven because I'm an owner as well. So, but level four is um, 
pretty much as high as you can go. So there's tasks that, that you can do. Um, we give out note cards which have got the various tasks on them. And when you've okay. achieved those, you submit your note card to say that this is, yes, I've done these. That's your proof. Um, and, and they might be things like um, a sort of organizing events, um so many hours of role play logged and you have to submit um sort of copies of parts of role play to to show that you're actually there doing it right um, all these things can move you up level so it's just to try and make it a little bit more interesting on top of the actual role play stories that go on that are very exciting anyway Okay, I was just, those were good questions and I thought we should probably cover them. So yes. for those of you, now you know we've covered the whole Star Trek RP and I haven't even gotten into the whole like dinkies and tinies and all the fun stuff that they do yet, um, which I'm sort of saving for December because what's more fun than having dinkies singing whoopness? Um, <laughs> so now we've covered the Game of Thrones, which is, it sounds really, really great. Um, and they're going to be having their masquerade ball that's coming up soon. Do you guys have a website or anything where you track some of your players and where they can have like forums for telling stories, etc.? We don't. We don't as yet, but it is okay. something that we are we are looking into, but we don't currently. Okay. Um, you just have to contact us one one of us in in worlds and we're more than happy to to give you any information that you need okay perfect all right great all right so um is there a facebook site One um the, as is just ask that no no we <laughs> no facebook you guys need a facebook site at the very least come I on know. it's not that hard to set up <laughs> <laughs> we need to get around to doing that and perhaps Perhaps one of our lovely role players would do that for us. <laughs> okay, okay, Beth. We're, we're, we're going to have to walk through the whole Facebook page one of these days. <laughs> All right. So, because okay. that, that really helps to, to build, uh, increase, you know, membership and, and generate interest and whatnot. Um, it might be kind of cool. I've always thought that our peers should maybe have like, um, kind of like a staged, not staged events in the concept of staged events, mind you, but like jousting tournaments being open to other people coming to see them and seeing, um, you know, where they have to dress up in the middle, like your, your masquerade, um, coming to the jousting event. And you sort of need to follow some rules about when you're there. This is their world. And yeah, you, you don't have to follow all the exact protocol, but, you know, just sort of follow and, and you know, what in Rome do as the Romans. I think that'd be very cool. It might help generate some extra some extra yeah. people because who doesn't like a good joust? I mean, look at the run fairs, that, you know, <laughs> a very good idea. <laughs> very um, good idea. I mean, so, um, one other thing I will say um, is it's not actually Game of Thrones connected, but I mean, some of you will know um, that as well as Game of Thrones, I'm also part of GT and I maybe shouldn't be saying this now, but I just wanted to say that um, we've got a show coming up um, on the 21st of October from 10 till 2 on Inworlds, and it's actually for Relay for Life. Um, and the show's called Dances of Hope. So I'm hoping people will come along to that as well. Yeah, well, Kelly just got done doing the promotion for that to just was it yesterday, That's Callie, good. or the day before? I, I forget when I put the little heart symbol on it. Anyways, um, and I tend to promote that through on, on Facebook as well. Um, so, yeah, everybody gets to promote their projects on here. We, we don't really we don't block them from doing that. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, you. that's. That's a big one because that's uh, probably, I think that's actually right before the end of Real Life for Life or it is the end. I forget. Um, so that's a, a big show. And uh, yeah, so it is yeah, the end. That, and that, that's one of the other things that I do in, in uh, that's one of the other things I do in, in, um, in Worlds and love to do. So, um yeah, we do have a life outside Game of Thrones too. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait. Do you have a life outside of In Worlds? There's the next biggest question. Um, what's that? 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Does it have a big red X up at the top that I can hit? <laughs> if, if not, then I'm not interested in it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Does it have a mute button? <laughs> Is there a way I can block you from speaking to me again? <laughs> yeah. uh, Wolfie has decided to join us up on the stage as we get ready to close out. Look at him. He's a big black wolf. He's so beautiful. Aww. He's, he's so cute. Anyways, all right, yeah. so I'm surrounded by Wolfie on the, in totally the wrong spot. He's not in his co-host, and he's a wolf. And we've got Ben Scan top of the triple. Uh, hopefully next show we'll kind of be back to normal, everybody, although normal is very highly overrated on this show. So, you know, we would like to keep with the with the sanity. You're not ousted by a triple wolf, Just and Ben Ski is not snoring. I cannot hear him. Thankfully. Anyways, so that's going to wrap up our show. If you guys are interested, please take a take a, a wander over. They have the West Rose, which um, one of the, the big ones is, I do believe it's High Ever, I want to say, Beth. Is that correct? High Ever is one of your regions? High Garden. High Garden. Thank you. Okay. That's, I think, probably the main sim, isn't it? Yeah. High Garden yeah. Is, is, is the main area. Um, and... But there's lots and lots of areas. I yes, mean, they have lots of areas, but High Garden is a good place for you to get started at. Um, yeah, and you can just pop in, observe, watch for a while, take a look at it, see if it's for you. I always love the medieval stuff. doesn't matter what genre. It's, it's always so much fun. I love medieval. I don't know why. I'm, I'm a sick, sick monkey. Um, anyway, so thank you, Beth, for, for coming and wearing the, he the HUD and you know losing four <laughs> points of food to us. Thankfully, we didn't make you joust or chop Wolf's head off or anything like that. Thank <laughs> you very much. Thank you for having me, and thank Thank you, everyone, for coming and listening. Hey, and I told you I don't bite heads off. So see, see, this and, is a good thing. And thank you, Wolfie, for coming as a wolf. Yes. So if you get a chance to stop by, they are absolutely beautiful sims. I've, I've done their pictures a few times on Facebook. Um, I've, I've gotten quite a few different th pictures uh, from their sims. Um, even if you just want to wander and just see some really gorgeous things going on, they, they really do have it over there. So we're going to close this out. Um, we're probably going to do our next show is going to be on schedule, which should be roughly three weeks from, from not today, but from yesterday. Um, I have to check the calendar, but yeah, we should be doing that. And we are not going to be having a ho or a guest for the next show. Um, we're going to hit on some things uh, as far as the grid goes. Uh, so some things that have that have sort of been popping up into my emails and, and forums, etc. A few times that I really do sort of want to spend a show just kind of addressing. Um, part of that's going to be mentors. Uh, it's going to be uh, showing people who are coming into in worlds exactly what they need to do because creators are good at what they do. Except sometimes they're not so great at marketing themselves. And uh, this, this can cause some definite angst for our, our new residents. So next show is really going to be dedicated and focused on that. You, are, of course, are very much welcome to come because a lot of you are actually very successful creators. And you know exactly what tends to work and, and what doesn't. So please come along. You can bring your suggestions and your tips. It's going to be a little bit probably a little bit more audience focused than usual. So I would welcome all of you and anybody who you know of who's a successful creator slash merchant uh, who wants to be here and just sort of help out. So until then, I hope everybody has a wonderful mm. Halloween semain or whatever holiday you tend to use to celebrate uh, the upcoming Halloween. And uh, we will talk to you next month. Bye all. Mm.